study. We bless the holy name of God. Thank you for joining with us. Thank you for being with us. God will bless in peace and prosper you. We do appreciate you and you are blessed and highly favored. My name is Chris, Pastor Chris of Africa Center, and I have my wife, Pastor Kunke. Okay. And you God bless you. Good evening, good evening. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you so much for joining us. You are blessed and highly favored. And welcome to Bible Study. Hallelujah. You are all welcome. God will bless and peace and prosper you. Thanks for watching on as we are the intro. God will bless you. And thanks for joining with us. We do appreciate you. And you are blessed and highly favored. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Interactive Bible Study, where we study to show ourselves approved of God. And you watching and tuning with us is not by accident, but by divine appointment. And God will divinely locate every one of us mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You are welcome once again. Thank you so much. God bless you. So as you are joining, don't come alone. Invite somebody. Call your friends. Tell them Bible study. Live, interactive. Bible study is on. And God will bless everyone in Jesus' name. This is your season, your moment for a great breakthrough. And God begins to turn things around even for you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. We're going to arise and shine, prosper, and succeed in Jesus. And don't forget that our Bible study interactive is full of package, different packages. You know, we had the word of God, question time, you know what, uh, praise time, prayer time, prophetic time, everything is included. So invite all your friends and family. As you know, we are on two platforms. You can see right now we are on Facebook. That's our Facebook um, page, as you can see on the screen. Share within your Facebook page, your timeline and within the groups you belong to and also share WhatsApp, Instagram and page and Facebook and God and, and what sorry, WhatsApp, Instagram and Messenger and God will bless because we are also on YouTube, that's our YouTube channel. Please those who are on YouTube begin to share and God will bless increase and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you so much for sharing. God bless you. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Thank you for joining us. We pray the Lord will bless everyone and have never before in the mighty name. Jesus. So let's pick up and invite our friends and God will bless because and prosper you. God will be to work his wonders and miracles even in every life and destiny. I know that our life shall never remain the same again. You are all welcome and I know we are going to arise and shine and prosper and succeed mightily and marvelously. So invite your friends, come along, let them all come along and God will bless the peace and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. And you are welcome. Let's get your Bibles, your writing part. This is Bible study. We're going to feast from the table of the master tonight, and God will bless every one of us, even like never before, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. So God bless you. Get ready for a turnaround, even in your lives, through the word of God, and God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you, bless you. We give all the praise, glory, honor, marvelous King, accept our thanks to your name. We are the Alpha and the Omega, the first, the last, the beginning, the end. God Almighty, who was and is and is to come to you, and is it accept our thanks to your name. There's none like unto you, there's none besides, there's none can compare unto you. You are the great God, you are the Christian, you are the Jehovah, you Mighty Father, I accept our thanks to Jesus' name. Mm. Every sin, Lord, forgive me, Jesus' name. Mm. Send your power into our midst. Holy Ghost, we need to walk in wonders. Mm. Have your way mm. through yourself. Let your name be glorified. Mm. We come against every work of the enemy. We destroy, we demolish it. Mm. We put that down in Jesus' name. Mm. We cover ourselves, Lord of Jesus. Mm. Holy Ghost, have your way mm. through yourself mm. and let your name be glorified. Mm. Touch us and meet us through Amen. your word tonight. Thank you, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved of God, let's come for God and begin to thank Him and begin to exalt His name. Let's thank Him in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the trial. 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 Thank you, Lord, for the good God, for the Lord, for the Lord. There's none that comes to you, there's none besides you. We bless you, worship you, praise you, adore you, honor you. Thank you, Lord. Master, Lord, Savior, bless your die, bless and worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Shadai. Bless you, worship you, praise you, adore you, honor you. There's none that comes to you, there's none besides you. No can compare unto you. Let our mighty God, bless your die. Worship you. Jesus, Amen. Is that blessed and all of my soul? Come on, God is with me. Bless his holy name. Say, Father, I am grateful tonight. Let's begin to thank you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We are grateful. Thank you. We bless you. Worship you. Praise you. Tell you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your mercy over our lives and destinies. We bless and worship you. Mighty Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you,
Bless the Lord. 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 Wash me with your blood. Let's begin to pray in Jesus' name. Father, we come before you. Forgive us, Father. Every sin that we have done, forgive. Father, forgive. Every one of us, Father, forgive. Forgive us, Father. 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 Forg
Send forth your word tonight and heal me and deliver me. Let's begin to pray. Father, Lord, Lord, for you. Send forth your word. Send your word. Send your word. Send your Send your word. 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 Send your Send your Send 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every every voice accusing me, my father, silence them by your word tonight. Let's begin to pray. Lord, silence my accusers tonight. 
Hold on, silence them. Silence. Do your work. Silence. 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 Hold on. Silence. In Jesus' name we pray. Wrap me around, even within your word. So that no evil before begin to pray. Father, Father, wrap me with your word around, around my family. Hold on. Wrap your word around us. No evil. No power. No authority. We touch us. Father, Father, wrap our life. Father, wrap our life around with your word. Wrap. Wrap around. Wrap around. Wrap around. Wrap around. Up around, up around, up around, up around, up around. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's tell God, Jehovah God, hear the word of God that we hear tonight. Increase my faith. Father Lord, increase my faith tonight. Let me begin to pray. Father, we come before let your word be tonight. Begin about faith. But that's why you begin before the Lord, the main, the end. Oh my God, oh God, increase, 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 increase our faith. Oh Lord, increase, 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 no, let your no, no, change no, 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 no. me. Let your change me. Let change me. Change us. Change. 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 Let your word remove every stigma in my life. Remove them by your word tonight. Begin to pray and say, God, oh, every stigma of the enemy, remove from my life tonight through your word. Through the word that will come out tonight. Remove every stigma, every libel. Remove by fire, by fire. Remove, 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 remove. In Jesus' name we pray. Let your word uproot every power standing in my way of suffering. Let your word uproot it tonight. Father, we begin and decree. Let your word uproot every power standing in my way of suffering. Uproot by fire. Destroy by fire. Make by fire. Or put on, 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 or put by fire, a 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 fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Let your word tonight put a smile on my face. I begin to pray in my job. So what are we here tonight, Lord? Let put a smile to my face, on my face. A smile, a smile, oh Lord. Have your way, have your way. Let your word put a smile on my face. Have your way, have your way. Do a new work, do a new work. In Jesus' name we pray. Now through your word visit me tonight. By your power, by your and I come before you, I want to judge you now. This is just, just, this is 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 just, you are getting me tonight. Let's begin to pray. Father, I pray. Father, I pray. Let your word be tonight. Father, I pray. Let your word be tonight. 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 Let your word Renew, 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 Father, we thank you, bless you, glorify you. We give all the praise we all know. We have made our prayers unto you. Grant our request. Have your way. Prove yourself. Let your name be glorified. We come against every work of the enemy. We bind, we cast away, we just grant our request. Lord, touch us like a man for prove yourself in the malice and destiny. Take control of this program and have your meet us at the very point of Amen. our need. Let your word begin to work wonders and miracles, even in our lives and destinies. Amen. Father, we honor, we bless you. We praise and we adore you in Jesus' precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen. You are all welcome to Jesus and God will bless you. Because I prosper, you welcome to Bible study online. Please begin to invite all your friends both on Facebook and YouTube. And God will bless you. Please and prosper you. Amen. And God will work his wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies. You know we are talking about the beauty tubes. And let's see, we're going to continue on that. We're going to do a summary. But as we are doing our summary, if you have any questions, maybe you are reading your Bible, or maybe you are telling some friends, or maybe you saw something on social media or TV or video and you want some um, explanation on that or so you want us to throw light on it, you can pop in your questions and you do summary and God will bless in case and prosper you. Get your Bible ready, get your notebook ready, we are going into a, in a journey to the word of God and tell you your life shall never remain the same again. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Amen. 
Matthew chapter 5 from verses 3 to 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst for their sake, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they that have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall reproach you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you, firstly for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Mm. Hallelujah. Tonight we'll be doing the summary of what we have done in this Matthew chapter 5 from verse 3. Verse 3 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of God. We said, if anybody wants to be blessed, they have to be poor in the spirit. How can you be poor in the spirit? That is, you will be hungry for God. You will test after God. You will say you have arrived. That is, you will be wanting to have more of God. You will be hungry for God. You will be thirsty for God. But if any man does, let him come. He says, for this is the kingdom of heaven. That is, everything that God has ordered for us, it shall be our portion. And God will help us in Jesus' name. And if I suppose the place at least that mourn, for they shall be comforted. What does that mean? It means that those who are feeling sorry for their sins, who are saying that Lord, I am sorry, and they repent, and if we repent and don't go back to your vomit, God says that they shall be comforted. Comfort in one sense, that is, no matter what the accuser may be saying, they are mm. comforted from the word of the accuser because they are, their sins are forgiven, which means that if you confess your sins truly, truly, don't allow the enemy to bring a negative mm. thought to your heart that you are suffering because and uh, why why God is not answering you? Why what you are going through is because of that sin. God has forgiven you, and you know what He has cleansed it, is thrown it into the sea of forgetfulness. And that's why they said that we should we should mourn for our sins, we should be sorry for our sins, we should feel have a spirit of remorse for our sins, and when we do that, we shall be comforted by the Holy Ghost and we can move forward and make progress without any guilt. The Bible says that therefore there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And then verse 5 says, Blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. But I was saying that when we are meek, it means we are humble, we will not be arrogant. So when we are humble, the Bible says that we shall inherit the earth. Because, because we are meek, we are humble, we will be favored, and whatever God has ordained for us, we will be able to access it easily because we are not arrogant. The grace to be meek, so we can inherit the earth. May God give it to us in Jesus' name. And today we are going on into verse 6. Which says that those are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So before then, if you have any questions, it's question time. It is question time. So if you have any questions, let's post in our questions either on Facebook or YouTube, and then we will resolve that and then begin to go into what we have today. I believe that the Lord will bless us on the Jesus' name. Mm. Maybe you are reading your Bibles, or maybe you are um, talking to some friends, or maybe you saw something on social media or internet or, or whatever. And you want some clarification on it, then let's begin do that and God will bless exam as well. And God begin to work his wonders and miracles, even in every life and destiny in the world. So you can post it in either on YouTube or Facebook, pick it up here and move on. And I know that God will bless us all in the name of Jesus. Amen. So as I wait your questions, God will bless you, increase and prosper you. We are teaching the book of Matthew, chapter 5, 3 to 12, I believe. 3 to 12. Yes, the beatitudes that Christ spoke. On the cross of Calvary, so the Bible book on the mount, on the mount, on the cross of Calvary, it's on the mount, and it's telling us that the things that the blessing in doing what we are supposed to do, and the reward that we gain in doing it, the blessing in doing what we're supposed to do, and the reward in doing. It. And I know that the Lord Himself will bless us all in the name of Jesus. God will begin to work His wonders and miracles in our lives. So post in your questions, and I believe. May Lord will do a great work and a mighty work, even in your lives. And there's a question time, and then God will bless us all in the name of Jesus. Either on Facebook or YouTube, and then we we'll go. If you don't have any questions, 
and we go into what we have today. And I believe that the Lord will bless us all in the name of Jesus. Yes, hallelujah. Verse, now verse 6 says, Blessed are those who... Are you own... continuing the question? No, 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 no. I'm just continuing. Okay, okay, okay. Because there's no question. Okay, okay, okay. Verse 6, verse 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be, they will be filled... God bless you, servant of God. Thank you for joining us. Bishop wrote me on a banjo. God bless you, sir. All the way from New York. God bless you, sir. Nice to see you. It is well with your soul, sir. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for joining us. So we go in. If there's no questions, or there are no questions, sorry. If there are no questions, then we go into what we have today. And then God will bless us all in As you know, we are talking about the beatitudes. This which Christ spoke on the mount when everybody was gathered up to him and they began to speak it. And for every blessing, for every action that we take, there's always a reward. Now today we are going into um, six, which says, as well, "Blessed are blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled." Amen. Now the question before we go into even um, hunger and thirst, the question is that in that context, what is righteousness? Because if we don't know what righteousness is, how do we know what to hunger and thirst after? So how do you understand the word righteousness in that context? So that, Blessed or blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. So, what is it? After righteousness, seek. Seek. So, so what, do mean, what, what, do mean, what does it mean by righteousness? What is righteousness? What is righteousness? Because we need to know what we are testing after before we test after it. If you don't know what to test after, so how do you know what to test after? You understand? So, what is righteousness in that context? Blessed are... Blessed... Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So, what is righteousness there? How do you understand what righteousness there in that verse? Well, we're no waiting, we are, mm. well, we're waiting for the response. To be righteous means to live right. It is the right standing with God. As a child of God, we must live a righteous life. Yes, we are justified. That is, the moment we give our lives to Christ, yes, we are justified. Our sins are forgiven. But we must grow in righteousness, which is sanctification. That is, it's growing in righteousness. So righteousness is the right standing with God. Amen. As I'm putting in that in, a question I just popped in, and I want us to deal with that question as we go on. Because that question is a little bit important. And we do that quickly, and then we go back into this righteousness so begin to post your understanding of the word righteousness also i said some things so what is righteousness what is righteousness and let's, let's answer that first and then we're going to so here there's a question here that says please explain please explain please explain who the father son and the holy spirit and jesus are Jesus, are they all the same persons? I have been requested to ask Sir Amma. Amen. You know, when it comes to the call, we call them the Holy Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. So when you say, and Jesus, you should not put and Jesus there, because Jesus is the Son. Just not in the Son. So we have God the Father, we have God the Son, and we have God the Holy Ghost. They are different entities, but they are one. You understand? And I explain to you, um, the best way we can explain to you is when we talk about the sun itself, S-U-N, the sun, the sun that shines the light. You know, the, the sun that shines the light, you know, nobody has ever seen the body of the sun. Nobody. You have never seen the body of the sun, but we know the sun has a body. So, the body represents the father. You understand? That is the father. No one has ever seen the father. But how do we know the sun is there? The light. The light the sun emits is how we know the sun is up there and that is um, Jesus Christ the light of the world he shows us he tells us that the father is mm. there the father is in him and him in the father and the third one is that when the sun is hot what do we do? We feel the intensity of the sun we feel the power of the sun now the power of the, the sun heat. we are feeling the heat the, 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 the heat the heat of the sun the intensity of the heat of the sun that represents the Holy Ghost you understand so we have God the Father God the Son God the Holy Ghost now we have the Son S-U-N as we have the body there as I said we have the light and we have the heat the intensity of the heat and that is one of the best we can describe and in new in in King James version 
of First John chapter five verse seven. I'm correct. First John five seven in King Jesus. It says something there that tells us, and Jesus said also, "I and the Father are one." And when he was living in Matthew twenty eight, um, twenty eight, um, nineteen twenty, said that, "Go and baptize in the name of the Father, name of the Son, and name of the Holy Ghost." So Christ was the first um, one that spoke the name of the Father, name of the Son, and name of the Holy Ghost. So they are three in one, but they have different functions. And it's through their functions that we know, okay, this is God the Son. God in, in the, and also in the beginning, from Genesis to Malachi, God the, God the Father reigned. God the Father reigned in the days of Moses. And then Christ reigned in the New Testament in the days of the four, four gospel. And then the Holy Ghost took over up till now. So the Holy Ghost still reigning up till now. Nowadays, that's why we ask for the power of the Holy Ghost. We ask for the gift of the Holy Ghost. You can't see the Holy Ghost. Nobody can see, but you feel his presence. You cannot see the sun, but you feel the intensity of the heat of the sun. And the sun is sun to the soul also. That is the way. But God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, they are one, united in one, and they agree in one, and they cooperate in one. Sister Benedicta said they are three in one, which is the Trinity. Yes. And if you go to Genesis during um, creation. creation, in Genesis 1, Jesus says, And let us make man in our own image yes. and in our likeness. The us... They are the two as us are, are in that Genesis one twenty six. It's talking about the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. So even from the beginning, the three were present, and you see the three are one. To be honest, it is a complicated it's a matter. Like, yes, it has what is is a mystery that unless the Holy Ghost will actually reveal the Father, the Son. And the Holy Ghost, how will be thinking, how come they say the Father, how come they say the Son, how come they say this? And the Holy Ghost, by the end of the day, is three in one. So people will argue that when you God marry and have a son, God does, not, God does not need to marry to have a son. Remember in the beginning, and this is what we don't remember, when in the beginning, when God created Adam, Adam only, he told Adam, go and flourish and replenish the earth. He did say it after he had created Eve. He said it before he created Eve. I will put out Eve from out of Adam. They go and replenish the earth. So there was a system in place whereby Adam could have been able to replenish the earth and reproduce. How? Don't ask me. I don't know. But I believe that God has put that in place. That's why I told him, go and have dominion. Go and replenish until they brought Eve out of Adam. And then both came together and the two became one. So that is how God is God, the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, they are one. But you know, in every establishment, in every religion, there's a head. So God the Father is the head, and then we have Jesus, and then we have the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is working right now in, in our in this dispensation, is the Holy Ghost that is working. And the Father said, in the beginning, you know, we have God. The, 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 the earth was formless and without form. And then God, we, we heard about God, and then we heard about and the spirit of God, that's the Holy Ghost. And then we had about God speaking the word. That word I have spoken is Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus was with God in the beginning, in the creation. And that's why John Mormon said that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So we can see that that all that tallies. And if I don't know if I can go first, first John chapter 5, 7 in King James Version. So we can read that. And then, but you want to read something, and then I want to read that also. I saw um, Genesis. 3.22 Genesis 3.22 it says Then the Lord said, Behold, the man has become like one of us. Mm. So the us there is talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So from the beginning, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost they work. It's a teamwork. So differentiating them mm. can be mm, you cannot even differentiate them. Yeah. The well, same. along the line, as you begin to grow in God, you begin to get a better understanding of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And you see, and they are both, and they are all working together as one. That's the mystery. And that is why, that is why, uh, it's only, only the Holy Ghost that can reveal that to you. And what's the Holy Ghost? But the, one of the best ways is to, is to, is when you see their function, when you see their manifestation, that you know this is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. You understand? God the Father sent the Holy Ghost to us through Jesus Christ. Just so that if it doesn't go, the Holy Ghost cannot come. So we can see. But I want to read that as you go. Um, that portion of the Bible. Oh, how do you press enter here? Okay. I think it's gone here. So, um, 
First John. It's not there. So I wanted to read to First John. First John. First John five seven in King James. So we can remember that's one of the passages that says about speaks about the God the Father and the Ghost. First John five seven in King James version. It says a lot regarding that, and I know that. It says. For there are three that bear record. For there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Yes. And these three are one. Are one. That's it. And the Word is Jesus Christ. So we can say that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. The three are one, and they are working hand in hand. That's why Jesus said that my Father is working, I am working still. And when Philip asked him that, and let us be satisfied, show us the Father. And he said that, don't feel that. How can you say? She was the father. Don't you believe that the father is in me and I am in the father? Even if you don't believe that, believe because of the works that you see being done. Because no one can do these works except it's granted by the father in heaven. So that's how it works. Jesus, Jesus said that all what I see my father do is what I am doing. All what I hear my father say is what I am saying. I'm not saying anything out of my own accord. I'm saying things. So that shows that. And Jesus said that he proceeded out of the father. The Holy Ghost will proceed out and come and then... He will bring into our remembrance righteousness, sin, and every other thing that he has spoken, and he will move. And we can see that happening in Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Ghost came down with fire and power. And we can see that the Holy Ghost speaks about Jesus. That's why you see, when there's any prophecy, when there's any word coming out, it has to glorify Jesus. That's what Paul says, and, and John says in 1 John 4 4. That 1 John chapter 4, he says that you should test spirits. Any spirit that doesn't confess that Jesus Christ is Lord or came in flesh is not of God. Mm -hmm. And the spirits that's not of God cannot confess that Jesus is Christ and came in flesh. And that's how we can test spirit. Because the Bible is not against testing spirit. We need to test spirit to know which ones are genuine, which are from God, and which ones are not from God. So I think that answers the question. I can't say another question. Thanks. And sister for that question that will bless us in the name of jesus so going into what we have today i was asking that um well, how do you understand the word righteousness what does righteousness mean or to be righteous what does that mean what does righteousness mean how do we understand the word righteousness in what we are talking about how do you understand the word righteousness and our father said that it's right standing with god in what other way can we understand righteousness because he said we should hunger and test after righteousness so how can we before we talk about hunger and testing after said, how do you understand the word righteousness righteousness our our viewers is interactive so we are waiting for response from you it's interactive for those who are joining us for the very first time this is an interactive bible study where we study to show ourselves approved of God. So begin to post in your questions, one, uh, sorry, your response one by one. If you happen, you can see posting your questions. We pick it up and we see discuss it. It doesn't matter. And God will bless us. So how do you understand the word righteousness? Righteousness. Righteousness. Yeah, from the Amplified Bible, mm. the word righteousness, it says right standing with God. Yes. Which can mean holiness, purity, that is living right, living a life of obedience. Yes. Less inward, okay, and be gentle and kind hearted with for they shall no, okay, sorry. Blessed are the redeemed by six, yes. are the joyful knowledge by God's goodness, are those who hunger and test for righteousness, those who those who actively seek right standing with God. So it's a continuous process that those who continuous continuously seek a right standing before God. They always want to be perfect before God. They always want to do the will of God. They want to always want to pursue the things that God will be pleased with, not the things that man will be pleased with or flesh will be pleased with. Because it's very important for us to know what righteousness is. Righteousness, in a nutshell, is right standing before God. Now, the question is that, do you have a right standing before God? Are you doing that which is righteous before God? Are you doing that which is holy before God? Are you, are you doing that which is acceptable before God? When uh, Abel, Cain and Abel offered a sacrifice to God, Cain was accepted and uh, Abel was accepted and Cain was not accepted. You see, and that is also today we need to do things that are acceptable to God because if they are not acceptable, then it's going to be a waste of time. May we not waste our time in the name of Jesus and we'll be righteous before God in Jesus' name. Somebody says, God fearing, honorable before God and man. Yes, thank you very much, sister. God fearing, honorable before God and man. 
I'm actually, no, I just like, I'm going to into two parts. Because I was listening to the Bible school, and um, they were saying that, when we are talking about righteousness, it's talking about justification, which is the moment we give our life to Christ, we are justified because at that point in time, once we confess our sins, we are free of guilt. So that means anything you have committed before that time, oh, say, Father, I have sinned as Lord and Savior, forgive me. We are justified. That's in the book of Romans. And then after justification, we now move into sanctification. Sanctification is, 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 is um, living. Actually, it's a progressive work. That is moving towards righteousness. As every day we are being perfected. Daily. Amen. 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 So it's very important for every child of God to pursue righteousness. I said pursue righteousness. We should pursue holiness. We should pursue these things because this is the only way we can be holy before God and do the will of God. Even though we say nobody is perfect, but we still have a role to play. The Holy Ghost or Christ will not just do everything for us. You and I will have a role to play. And what are the roles we need to play? Number one, we need to flee from every appearance of sin. That is very important. You and I, we need to flee from every appearance of sin. Whatever has sin in it, that's why we should flee from it. Because if you don't flee from it, then it begins to stain that righteousness. Because righteousness is like a white garment that we have worn. That's the righteousness of God. And if Christ has not taken one, can stain it. The vision talks about that. That those who have put on the white garment, righteousness of garment, white garment, righteousness of garment, and then they, should, they have not stained their garment. Because if Christ has taken, the garment can be stained. And how can the garment be stained? By sin. So anyone who wants to live a righteous life must flee from sin. Now, my question now again is that what is the I just want to give some words about righteous living. That's why Matthew 5 48 says, Be ye perfect yes, as your heavenly Father is perfect. perfect. Um, left to cost 19 ones, left to cost 19 two says, Be ye holy for I am holy. And then first Peter 1 16 says, And be holy in all manner of conversation. For I am holy. Mm. So the God we are serving is a righteous God. And we truly, 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 we are the children of the Most High God. Um, Philippians 2 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. God wants us to be like Him. That's why Bible says, To seek it first, the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And every other thing will be added unto us. And like, but I, like, and like what preacher said, he said, If it were not possible to live a righteous life, Jesus will not say, be ye only for I am only. God will not tell us to do what is impossible. So that means it is impossible to live a life that is, it is righteous. It is possible. You said it is impossible. No, it is, I said it is, it is possible. Okay. It is possible. It is possible to live a righteous life. Yeah. So God will give us that grace to live a righteous life. And God will begin to work his wonders and miracles even in every Amen. life. Yes, in Jesus' name. So how can we, before we go into hungry, to hunger and test for each other's sake. What are the things that can lower the standard of righteousness in a life? Let me do that with What are the things that one can do that will, con that will lower the standard of righteousness in a life? Because righteousness has a standard and God wants to keep that standard. So, what are the things mm. that can lower the, that, the, the standard? Of God's righteousness in our lives. What are the things? Awesome. Hmm? I think using the word lower. Or stain. Stain. Because if you say lower, because it's either somebody is righteous or they are not righteous. There is no standard to it. That oh, um, how will happen? If somebody is living in sin, is either somebody is in sin or they are not in sin. Those, those, those are the things that can affect righteousness. So what are the things that can affect your righteousness in Christ? What are the things that can affect the righteousness in Christ? Because, of course, as I said before, number one, I will flee from the appearance of sin. Nobody can be in, say you are righteousness, you are righteous, and then you are in sin, and you are still claiming righteous. That will reduce that, that would contaminate and stain that righteousness. Just as the white garment the Bible talks about in Revelation, that these people have not stained their garments. That is, they have not lived in sin. So, what are the things, let me do, let me finish, what are the things that can stain the righteousness of God in a life. What are the things that can stain the righteousness of God in a life? What are the things that can stain 
the righteousness of God in a life. Well, I would say what can actually cause us to live an unrighteous life is when we make bad choices. The Bible says we have to choose between good and evil. So if somebody will choose to choose evil way, that is unrighteousness. So our choices will determine whether we are living a righteous life or an unrighteous life. That's why as children of God, we must make the right choices. Choose this day. Choose life or death. May we not choose death. May we only choose life. Because when we choose life, we are saying, Lord, I just want to live for you. I don't want to live anyhow. So your choices also determine that is, you make right choices. Because if somebody makes wrong choices, then that will stain the essence of God in that life. So we can see that sin can stain it. Wrong choices can stain it. What else can affect the righteousness of God in a life? What else can affect the righteousness of God in a life? You know, as a child of God, because we need to know this before we know, talk about hungering, hungry, and uh, hunger to hunger and test after righteousness seek. So what are the things that can affect this righteousness? Because righteousness is what we do. We are going into it every day. We are going into it. We are moving into it from glory to 